It is a problem that we all know. That is, again, I cannot speak about Canadian Jewry. I can speak, but I suspect it's roughly the same. It is people who are over the age of 50, most particularly people who are over the age of 65, Jews over the age of 65 in the United States, who are most committed to the state of Israel, who say in public opinion poll after public opinion poll that Israel is central to their identity, to their Jewish identity. It's important in their lives as Jews. The lower down you go, the younger that you go, is the, you see a growing number of Jews, young Jews, for whom Israel doesn't mean very, very much. It just doesn't mean very much. Anybody who is interested in philanthropy knows that. Younger Jews are more likely to give to non-Jewish causes. He's referring to the Peter Barnard article in the New York Review of Books, in which, again, the rabbi has stated it very, very well, is that some uh, young American Jews are more concerned with human rights than they are, or they look at human rights and they, they put it in a context that is unfavorable to the state of Israel. Why don't the Israelis, why are there checkpoints, why are uh, Palestinians harassed, why don't they have the same rights, and so on, why are the Israelis occupying the land? These are legitimate questions. Uh, what I think Barnett does not do, much in the same way, I would compare Barnett with Judge Goldstone. He doesn't seem to understand the context. He's a smart man, he doesn't understand the context. How many of those young Jews understand that Hamas says that the Jews, not the Israelis, the Jews are responsible for the revolution of 1789, the revolutions of 1848, the revolutions of 1917, and that the Jews brought about two world wars? I mean, I never taught that in my history classes, nor did I ever learn it in my history classes. And this is not an attack upon on Zionists or upon Israel, this is an attack upon Jews. How many people know that Hamas calls for the destruction of the state of Israel? It's a free country. It is literally a marketplace of ideas. You, can, you just have to press the case. You have to press the case for Israel, and you also have to say, again, the position, and I even used it in one uh, uh, today, today. I, I moved it very quickly. What is our aim for those who are committed to the state of Israel? We should state unequivocally, we want a two-state solution. We want a state of Palestine where the Palestinian people can live in peace, prosperity, and dignity. And we want a Jewish state of Israel where the Jews can live in peace, prosperity, and dignity. That is that we've got to stand on that position. We're not only concerned with Jews, we are concerned with the well-being of the Palestinians because this may not only be a moral issue. If the Palestinians remain a frustrated, antagonized, and alienated people, there will be no peace for the state of Israel. So you've got to make the case. Yeah, address yourself to liberal issues. Address yourself to the issues of human rights. And when Israelis act beyond the legitimate, in, uh, in illegitimate ways, they should be condemned. But the fact of the matter is, most of the time, they are condemned. And when people don't like the checkpoints, again, you can, I'm saying to you, yes, you're right, I'm talking to the converted, to the, to the choir here. The fact of the matter is, why are there checkpoints? There are checkpoints because the Palestinian terrorists have come in and they've killed hundreds of Israelis. That's why there are checkpoints. But the question always has to be, how many checkpoints do you need? That's a legitimate question. How many checkpoints do you need? Are there ways that you can minimize the pressure upon the Palestinians? Yes, the answer is yes. But also, where Barnett does not seem to, because he's been passing, he addresses it. The issue I keep telling you is not, the ball is not in the Israeli court. The ball is in the Palestinian court and in the Arab court. Barack offered Arafat the store. Almert offered Abbas the store. They got no responses. Now, again I say to you, what is happening now is not all that different historically. If we were talking about 70 years ago, again I cannot talk about Toronto, but in New York City, 70, 80, or 90 years ago, you know what those people who are committed to Zionism would say? You know what the trouble with our young people is? They're joining the American Socialist Party. They're voting communist. They're more involved in the trade unions. They're involved in the left, and so on. 
It's always a problem. That is, as you well know, what is the great tension in the Jewish political tradition? The tension between the universal and the parochial, or the universal and the particularistic. So that a number of our young people are swayed by this is nothing new. Can we bring them back? Here's what the, the research shows you. It's probably, I don't have, to a Canadian audience, it's not, it's not going to resonate because you already do it, many of you, more than we do it in the United States. The best bang for the buck in generating a sense of Jewish consciousness among young people is a Jewish summer camp experience. Send your children, you make sure your children, your grandchildren go to a Jewish summer camp. Link yourselves with the state of Israel. That is not only by giving money and by going there, but making it possible not only for your children and your grandchildren, but for other Jewish children and grandchildren that may not have the means to go there. Do that. And then also, again, I've said this to you, I, I, not this weekend, but I've said it before. Judaism is not a pediatric religion. It is not for the children. You're all so concerned with your children and your grandchildren. If you want to establish, if you want to maintain Jewish continuity, lead a Jewish life. And by leading a Jewish life, I'm not, it's up to you. Who am I to tell you how to lead a Jewish life? Now, at the risk of being heretical, and I speak to you as someone from a conservative Jewish background who goes to a conservative synagogue who is moderately religious, I tell you, now don't get upset what I'm telling you, I do believe in revelation on Mount Sinai. I do believe that God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. But I know that many people cannot accept that. For people, many people, it defies rationality. What your job is to do, what the job of our Jewish community is to do, is to tell everyone in the community. Now, if I were in the synagogue or in the Bema, I would turn around and I would point at the ark. And I would say, you may think this is a bunch of bubamites, but it's not. Even if you don't believe in Revelation on Mount Sinai, what is in that Torah is the genius of our people. What is our, those are our contributions to humanity. Whether God gave them to Moses, or Moses did it, or a committee did it, or Jethro did it, that's a, that's a matter. Oh, you can argue. But that's our contribution. And again, you're making me sound like a rabbi here. <laughs> and that's, and I, 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 what, what am I telling you? You ask a hundred Jews, what's the Jewish contribution? They'll tell you monotheism. That's not true. What's our great contribution? It is ethical monotheism. The God of Israel is as much concerned with the relationship among human beings between ourselves as the God of Israel is concerned with how we treat the God of Israel. That's not chopped liver. That's important. I mean, it really is significant. You have off on a Saturday, the idea of the sabbatical, all those things that you've heard ad nauseum. That's us. We gave the world that. The first giant step was not taken in Athens. It wasn't taken in, in Samaria. It was taken in Judea. It was taken in the kingdom of Israel. Or maybe even before that in the Sinai desert. That's what. It's not for me or anybody to tell you how do you observe the Sabbath, how, what to do and how you eat and so on. It's not my job to tell you that. What my job is and what a rabbi's job is to tell you, this is what our people gave this is why it is important to remain Jewish, and this is what we have to do for the rest of humanity. That's what you got to do.